In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through Him, and nothing was created except through Him. The Word gave life to everything that was created, and His life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. So the Word became human, and His home was made among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. And we have seen His glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. So this year, uh, the, word, the Word, the scripture that she just read, that's 1 John. And uh, the, the Word that it's describing is Jesus. It's Jesus, the Word made flesh. And so He came to live... He came to live with us. He came to live among us. He came to live like us. And he came to bring light into a darkness. And that's what we celebrate this year. As we light our Christ candle today, it is the celebration of Christ King, the servant King, who came not only to rescue us, not only to bring light, but to challenge us and to encourage us into Christ likeness, to save us from a world who we were destined for darkness. And that's what we celebrate this year. What do we celebrate, Ella? Um, um, this Christmas, we're celebrating um, God, and then you will. God is with us. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. everybody. So good afternoon. Uh, welcome to, to Colonial Church. Uh, Merry Christmas to all of you. Whether you're joining us here in the room, whether you're joining us online, uh, perhaps you have a mask on, perhaps not. Welcome. We're glad you're here. This is 2020, so it's a year of uh, strange uh, flexibility and accommodations. You notice that the Hodges family was there and not here because um, he's been exposed and so he's on quarantine. Pastor Lauren's message will be coming by a video from somewhere in his house later because he's home having tested positive with COVID. So it's a year of flexibility and we appreciate you being here and finding ways to interact with your family. If you're here in the room with us, please stand, let's worship together. Good morning, church. Let's worship this morning and hi to all my kiddos. I wanna hear you guys singing too, okay? Joy to the world.
brought back into a world of crazy. So um, if you guys would have a seat, we're going to start the message. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and Merry Christmas. Uh, I so wish I could be there on campus with all of you who have gathered together to celebrate the birth of Jesus. Uh, I know a lot of you that are joining us online right now feel the same way. It's just it's a special time of year, but it's not the same when we're not together with our family, when we're not together with our church family. I'm, I'm so bummed I can't be there with you. But Merry Christmas, nonetheless. Uh, 2020 is about making the most of our circumstances, right? And it's rolling with it. I just found out a couple of days ago that I have COVID. Uh, it's radically changed our family's plans, of course. It's radically changed even our church's plans. I was really looking forward to being there with you today. As of the recording of this video, which is late on Wednesday, um, I feel pretty good. Uh, I'm really tired. I'm coughing. I hope I don't cough too much in this few moments with you. I'm congested, mostly just tired. I'm not miserable. I know some people that have had COVID or, or have had a much rougher experience than me. So thank you for your prayers. Um, I am eager to share something with you today on Christmas Eve as we all turn our attention together to Jesus. This time last year, about 100 miles south of here, uh, somebody stole the baby Jesus. Check out this local news story. From a distance, you don't notice. The three wise men, uh, Mary and Joseph. But the Washburns know the central figure in their nativity is missing. And it looks sad. Because everyone's looking down and, and that's where he should be. They paid almost $1,000 for this high-end set. Put it up last week. Saturday the 23rd, about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. With our two grandchildren. But just eight hours later. The suspect came and got baby Jesus in the actual manger. We don't know if a higher power was watching, but the Washburn security camera was mounted right above the manger. 
A young woman steps in the spotlight and makes off with baby Jesus. As soon as I saw there was a person there, I came out and they were gone. You're kind of like startled. How could they possibly do this? Parker County Sheriff Larry Fowler isn't laughing. I can assure you this is as far from a joke as you can get. His department combing over the video asking the public for help. They think the woman is in her early 20s with a red cell phone case, unusual shoes and makeup. Maybe some kind of a cult deal or something. I don't know what it is. He's confident they'll get this wrapped up before Christmas. And while Jesus may show mercy, the sheriff may not. There you go. A few years ago, a woman in a string of Christmas decoration burglaries got a 70 year sentence. The birth of Christ coming up and you want to go pull this? No, no. I mean, we've decided that the suspect <laughs> probably needed Jesus more than we did. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah. we've forgiven her and we just want her to bring it back. Yeah. Waiting for the return of sweet baby Jesus. In Parker County, I'm Bradley Blackburn. If nothing else, I love the sheriff of Parker County. Uh, this is far from a joke. You steal baby Jesus, you're going to get go to jail forever and ever. <laughs> if he didn't say those words, that's what I heard. I am not messing around down near Weatherford. Well, this time of year... It's normal for all of us to think of Jesus as the sweet baby in the manger. I mean, our songs are about him being tender and mild, how he lays his sweet head, how no crying he makes, all of these adorable images of the divine child. I think that's appropriate for us around Christmas time. But the problem is, I think we usually imagine Jesus as an adult in the same way that we view him as a baby. As an adult, I think a lot of us most of the time picture Jesus as this soft-spoken, meek and mild, gentle savior who, who talks you know, softly and gently and has a twinkle in his eye and it's pretty much just a, a big grown-up baby. I just want to ask a simple question today because we, I think we rarely picture Jesus as being hostile or confrontational or combative, or in any way socially impolite, right? I, I, I'll bet you don't picture him that way. So here's my question. Who are we welcoming and worshiping at Christmas? Really? 700 years before the birth of Jesus, the prophet Isaiah wrote about the first Christmas coming someday, about the coming birth of the king. And he described him as the Prince of Peace. Sure enough, that first Christmas came and there were, there were shepherds working in the fields. There was an army of angels that showed up and filled the night sky. And they declared glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. That theme is everywhere around Christmas, right? Peace, peace on earth. It's in our Christmas carols and our song lyrics. It's on our Christmas cards. It's, it's posted everywhere around us. We think that Jesus came to bring peace, to bring the end of conflict, to, to make our lives more comfortable, better, more secure, safer. But is that accurate? Well, definitely the Bible does say that Jesus is the Prince of Peace and he did in a very real sense come to bring peace. But the Gospel of Matthew records the words of Jesus that they actually might change our understanding of who he is and, and why he came on that first Christmas. Matthew writes that Jesus chose his first 12 followers. He had his first round draft picks and he sent them out on a mission to tell everyone about the kingdom of God. He, he actually gave these 12 disciples very specific instructions to do three things. He said, I want you to raise the dead. I want you to heal the sick and I want you to tell everybody this good news, this great news about who I am and what I'm doing. And Jesus also warned them really strongly. He said, you're going to suffer for being faithful to this mission. Some people are actually going to hate you for being faithful to this mission. And then Jesus said these words. He said, don't imagine that I came to bring peace to the earth. I came not to bring peace, but a sword. Wait, what? I came not to bring peace but a sword? What happened to the Prince of Peace, right? And that definitely does not fit with our picture of the sweet baby Jesus in the manger. That de definitely does not fit with our picture of, of Jesus the adult who's sweet and meek and gentle and our savior. What does Jesus mean? I came not to bring peace, but a sword. Well, first of all, I, I really don't think he's being literal here. Uh, Jesus is not 
literally brandishing a sword. None of the four gospel writers recorded a single moment of Jesus holding a sword. Let's give this statement a little bit of context. Earlier in that same conversation conversation with his, his first round draft picks, his 12 first followers, he told them what to pack when they went out on this mission. He specifically said, don't bring any money, don't bring any extra change of clothes or extra, che- uh, extra shoes, don't bring a walking stick, don't even bring any food. He was very clear and he did not include, hey, you should bring a sword. So we definitely know he's not being literal here. He's using the sword as a metaphor, as a symbol. So what does he mean? Well, most of us think of a sword as a weapon, as an an instrument for violence. Is that what Jesus mean? When he came the first Christmas, is the first Christmas all about death and destruction? Some people actually think so. Look at our history. Some Christians have interpreted this part of the Bible to justify war against non-Christians. Some Christians have used these scripture passages to justify killing non-Christians in the name of God or to protect the church violently in some way. And yet we just can't find anywhere in the Bible that Jesus advocates violence. He didn't come for death and destruction. Nowhere do we find that Jesus is pro-war. Remember, this is the same Jesus who very clearly told us to love our enemies. This is the same Jesus who, who told us to pray for those who persecute us. This is the same Jesus who, while he hung on a Roman cross, executed, he prayed to forgive the people who were executing him. This is the same Jesus who told Peter to put away his sword because, and I quote Jesus here, those who use the sword will die by the sword. Jesus certainly here is not advocating violence or war. So what does he mean? The key word here is peace. Jesus said, don't imagine that I came to bring peace. Now, the word that Jesus used here is the original Hebrew word shalom. It's a beautiful word. It doesn't just mean peace. It it means the absence of violence. It's a peace that comes from, from wholeness, from completeness, completely put together, unified. It's the wholeness that comes when when nothing is missing, when everything is one. So what Jesus is saying here is don't imagine that I came to bring wholeness. I've come to bring the opposite. And the opposite of wholeness or completeness is, is division. He's using the image of a sword to mean to divide, to cut, to sever. I came not to bring peace, but a sword. I came not to bring wholeness and unity, but division. This fits the context of what Jesus is talking about to his first followers. What Jesus is saying here is that his mission is to turn everything upside down. And we see him doing that even from the first Christmas day. When King Herod the Great heard that the Messiah, the Christ, the divine king, had been born in the village in Bethlehem, just a few miles away from his palace, he was deeply disturbed because even as a baby, Jesus was a threat to his power, to his kingdom. He'd come to turn everything upside down. So what did Herod the Great do? He tried to have the baby killed. When Mary and Joseph brought Jesus as an infant to the Jewish temple to be dedicated, which was the custom of the day, there was this old man there named Simeon And he recognized that this baby was the Christ. And while the old man held the baby in his arms, he said these words to Mary and Joseph. He said, this child is destined to cause many in Israel to fall and many others to rise. This child is going to turn everything upside down. This child is going to divide. This child is going to cause division. So how do we need to correct the way we see Jesus this Christmas season? I believe this with all my heart. We do not celebrate a passive Savior's birth. We do not celebrate the birth of someone coming just to make us feel better. Jesus is the most unique, most radical person who has ever walked the earth. He did not come to bring peace. He came to bring a sword, to turn everything upside down, to to dethrone Every illegitimate king in your life, every illegitimate king in my life, he did this by calling all people back to himself, back to right 
relationship, right connection with God as it was supposed to be in the beginning, back into the kingdom of his father. He invited people who everybody else thought was totally disqualified from being connected with God. He invited tax collectors and sinners and prostitutes and thieves and drunkards and everyone on the margins of society. He welcomed them all back into connection with God. And he welcomes you just as you are, not as you should be, back into connection with him. He, he invites me, all of us, into connection with him. Jesus turned the world upside down by showing how much God radically loves all people. And he invites us to love God back just as much. Now, why is that so threatening? Why is that divisive? Why is that turning things upside down? That sounds like really good news, right? It's because for you and for me to be back in right relationship with God, to, to love him back with everything we are. It means you and me having to take something else in our lives out of that place. You and I, every one of us, we have put something in the place that rightfully belongs only to God. And, and just like Herod the Great was threatened by the birth of a new king, you and I should be threatened by the birth of Jesus. Christmas should be, this sounds crazy, a little threatening. He has come to dethrone whatever is on the throne of our lives that he alone has authority over. That's why he came to bring a sword. Jesus came to turn it all upside down. I really like how author C.S. Lewis puts it. He says, Christ says, give me all. I don't want so much of your time and so much of your money and so much of your work. I want you. I'm not come to torment your natural self, but to kill it. No half measures are any good. I don't want to cut off a branch here and a branch there. I want to have the whole tree down. I don't want to drill the tooth or crown it or stop it, but have it out. Hand over the whole natural self, all the desires that you think are innocent, as well as the ones you think are wicked, the whole outfit. I will give you a new self instead. In fact, I will give you myself. My own will shall become yours. This is why Jesus came that first Christmas, to demand full allegiance, which causes a lot of division in us. It causes division around us. My hope is that we can look not at the manger and only see a sweet, mild, laying down his sweet head, baby Jesus, um, actually think he's no such thing. My hope is that we can embrace the coming king and all the demands he has of each of us. If any of you wants to give your full allegiance to the king, to Jesus, I can't think of a better time than Christmas. Please use our Colonial Church app. We've got a, on the dock on the bottom, you just hit connect. And there's a few options there. And oh my goodness, we would love to follow up with you in this, even in this crazy COVID season over the Christmas holidays and talk to you about what it means to surrender our lives completely to the King Jesus and live the life he has meant for each of us. Merry Christmas, everybody. For he alone is worthy, for he alone is 
Let every heart and tongue confess Let all the earth rejoice Let all the earth rejoice Remaining no accusing voice His resurrection power in us Triumphant in Jesus' name Triumphant in Jesus' name Oh, come let us adore Him Oh, come let us adore Him Christ the Lord For He alone is worthy For He alone is worthy
As we move to the next part of our service, we'd like to invite the welcome team up to light their candles from the Christ candle. As we celebrate the birth of Jesus, I want us to see our candles as a physical representation of the light that came into the world. And that light was Jesus Christ. And that light was brought to us to show us the way. Oh, mm -hmm. 
You can uh, blow out your candles now, and as you leave, drop them in the bucket if you would. Thank you for coming, for celebrating with us, for taking time out of your schedule if you're online and joining us and stopping to worship together to celebrate the depth of what Christmas is. So thanks for coming and joining us on Christmas Eve. A couple reminders I want to uh, bring to your attention before you leave. First off is we have a rhythm here the last few years to give all of our workers and team members and uh, volunteers, everybody off the weekend after Christmas. So we will not have any services either online nor here in the room next weekend on the 27th. So uh, spend time with your family. That's what we try to say thank you to all those who work and volunteer and help out so much throughout the year. Uh, so next weekend, no services. Uh, secondly, uh, you should have received an email from us uh, this last week or so that had your financial contribution statements um, up to this point in time. Just a reminder for you to look at those to make sure we have our records correct. Also attached to that was a video from Pastor Lauren that um, had some words of encouragement. Also, um, short stories from three different people in our congregation, encouraging stories. So if you didn't see that, let us know. Make sure we have the correct email address or check your spam folder. You know how that goes sometimes, but we encourage you uh, to take a look at that. And finally, as we uh, near the end of the year, just an IRS kind of reminder that uh, contributions, they have eased up some of the restrictions uh, because 2020 has been so um, strange. Um, but still, there is a hard line at 1231. So anything you'd like to have on your contribution statement for this year, make sure that it is by IRS rules, either in our hands or postmarked by the 31st. And then we'll keep ourselves happy and keep IRS happy as well. So thank you for doing that. Let me pray as we close. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for what Christmas means to us, for the incarnation, for the birth of the baby Jesus, who is Lord Almighty and King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Thank you for that miracle. Thank you for an opportunity to get together with families, even if it's a little different with this year. Thank you so much for what it means to have your love for us and allow us to share that with those around us. Thank you for even our city lights go up and in their own way we celebrate even those who weren't really close to you help us to find ways to share the love of christ and to share the good news about the jesus who loves them thank you for this day we ask your blessing as we go on our families we pray in christ's name amen